Anyway, so <laughs> we're having a good time here in the studio. Um, once again, Condor Online is back with his topic series. And I missed this from last season when we did Mental Health Awareness Week mm -hmm. and we did Climate Change. And so here in the new season, in the new studio here at Condor Online, one topic series is back and it's back just in time for International Women's Week. And for International Women's Week, what we're going to be doing is the theme is Provocators of Change. And we've been talking to several women that we've experienced in our sphere of influence and everything and asking them about what do they think about the female agenda, provocators of change, time's up. All of those things, and we're dealing right now here with a lovely young woman, a model, an actress, a filmmaker, Kaylee Jade. Hello, Hello Kaylee. Hiya. So, <laughs> all right, that didn't sound confident. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee just she's like, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> But, I mean, either way, it's lovely to see you here, Kaylee. Um, now, what was really interesting is, is that um, I've known you for time now, yeah. you know, and in different experiences, but most of the times we've come into each other's orbit is like when you're, you know, um, you, you're pursuing your dream of being a director, yeah. right? And right now you're still a student, mm -hmm. right? You're at uh, Liverpool Media Academy, I yeah. understand. On my second year, yeah. Right, right, right. But you have been doing what most students should do is is that from my experience of you is is that you get the equipment, you get some uh, fellow filmmakers and you have been making stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um like the stuff that I wanna make as well is sort of like raising awareness about things. Like yeah. that's what I love to do. Like I enjoy that. Um and most of the stuff is because, you know, if it's something that's like needs touching on I'll sort of put that into, you know, perspective. Yeah. Um, write up what needs to what it needs to be about and stuff like that, and then I like get people and get them involved. But sometimes like I'll go off it as well because I like the harder side. Yeah, you go you go <laughs> a bit a dark yeah. um, <laughs> and everything. But what I love about the darkness in you is the yeah. fact that that you are not afraid to uh, tackle the tough subjects. Yeah. You know, in several different films that I've seen you make, you know, you are willing to open up and attack these subjects. We, I mean, there's suicide, there's yeah. domestic violence, um, there's um, other kind of atrocities that that happened in in life, mm -hmm. and you you speak about it. So, yeah. I mean, overall. I mean, like, what is your intention into that? Is it to highlight these experiences? Is it to uh, um, build awareness? Tell me. It's sort of like to build awareness. And then in most, like, films, I always have, like, a person who dies. Mm, and yeah. it's because I am sort of, like, obsessed with, like, death. Because it's sort of what, ap uh, sorry, what happens after and, you know, like, you know, the impact it has on a person. But the whole aspect. You mean of the it people that are left behind? You yeah, mean. yeah. The whole aspect as well of why I like to portray death in like a film is because like it's a whole rebirth mm. type of thing. It's sort of you know important to me because oh, yeah. half the things that I've been through, I've sort of learnt to be strong and have strength through it, and yeah. it's sort of like to me the rebirth of myself essentially. Wow, that's nice. Is, you know, because there's, uh, the, I, I always quote this guy, uh, Nietzsche, who says, defeat makes one stronger. Yeah. And so that's really kind of like a good way of looking at it when you're looking at this whole reaper concept, yeah. you know, and the kind of um, style and technique that you were pursuing in your films. Yeah. And um, so, like I said, you know, you've been doing um, a couple of these, um, and this is kind of like the first time I heard of you being in LMA, but I guess you've been in LMA for um, the past two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything. So what kind of support do you think you received in in, in making these films? Well, um, they have all, like, the technology, the, you know, that we can use, and they've taught us how to use them and stuff like that. Um, Tony, the head teacher, like, he's amazing, like, yeah. and we can always go to them for advice, and they're always giving you feedback on the stuff yeah. that, you know, you filmed and 
all that stuff in. They're always there to help. Like I find myself sometimes like I get a bit shy and I'm just like, right. oh no, I can't go and ask for help. But then wow. they give you that push and they're like, if you really need it, come to us. And then you know they show you and they give you good examples and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And especially like learning how to write a script as well. Yeah. Um, they give you like you know computer ah apps and all that to like yeah yeah to write it and stuff like that. Well, like I mean, jobs as well. that's how it's supposed to be, isn't it? I yeah. mean, like, because a lot of times, a lot of schools, especially when it comes to media, it's kind of like, here's a camera, go forth and do. <laughs> and, like, um, you need that kind of support yeah. because, you know, how else are you going to learn? And you're going to learn by, you know, because we were kind of like talking, and we won't we won't go down there. We are kind of <laughs> like talking about, you know, it's different films you have been involved in making. Yeah. And you're like, and I said, well, can we talk about it? You said, no, I don't want to talk about it. But <laughs> Like think it about good, it. But it's no, just no, like... no, no, no. Oh, what I mean is, is that it's back to the Nietzsche. It's yeah. back to the fact that at least you made them. Yeah. See, this is one thing I can say about you. Like I said, in knowing you in these couple oh, yeah. of years, is your work ethic to um, move on. Yeah. Like, like my company being Square One Pictures is because, you know, okay, if that didn't work, I'm going to go back to Square One. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go, oh, I can't do it. I'm just <laughs> going to go back and do it again, you know, yeah. or find a different avenue, different people yeah. or whatever. So, and that's what I've seen in you. And I mean, that's really uh, commendable, especially mm-hmm. being so young as well, because you seem to be very driven in your dream. Yeah. Where, do, where do you think that came from, being so driven? To be honest, I really do think it, it came from my mother's death. To be mm. honest, like she passed away four years ago. Right, um, yeah. I made like a choice because I sort of I fell into depression and I was just like, I can't do it. I just I can't. And then you know it got to a year later, and I just thought, you know what? No, my mum wouldn't want me to mope around like this. She'd want me to get up and live my dream, and. I don't know where it came from, but I think it was when I was doing performing arts when I was 16, and I just always thought, I want to be an actress. Right. But then when I set up my YouTube channel, and I found that I was directing my own stuff, editing my own stuff, and, you know, acting and all that, I just thought, you know what, I want to do that as well as, you know, film and television. Because I thought, like, if I went for an audition as well, and I've done film and television, you know, in the background as well, yeah. they'll think, oh, she's... um really dedicated yeah and that's what I wanted like I wanted to experience all of that and have that dedication behind me and the passion and the drive Mm -hmm. and I kind of look at it as I can't give up because I want my mum to be proud so then you know when I do like die hopefully of a really old age I'll meet her and she'll be she'll be really proud of me she'll take me in her arms and be like I'm so proud of you you carried on you know you 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 were gonna give up and you just you didn't um these past like couple of years, like since her death, I've took a lot of blues. Like I've took, um, you know, a lot of things that have happened to me. Mm-hmm. But I've learnt me lessons from it, and you know, like I I want to make films about the stuff that I've experienced and help other people as well, um, especially about like mental health and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that seems to be also a remit of like uh, the capital culture nowadays. Anyway, is to. Uh, focus on that and um so you know what's really interesting is is that being knocked down you know and uh because it's like the rocky story right (laughs) you know i mean rocky could get knocked down he could get pummeled over and over again but the one thing he can do is get back up Mm -hmm. and a lot of people find that difficult so i mean what do you think uh that is in you that um causes you to persevere see like I think mostly it's because I think if I died, I know it sounds really morbid and all that, but it's just all the people you're leaving behind and, you know, I want to leave like a legacy behind, which it it, like, it literally like carries me through life to be honest, because it's like, I want to make all those people proud and show them that I've got what it takes and I'm never going to give up. So Mm. like, if I was giving advice to someone, I'd just be like, just think of your future. Look at all what you've been through. You're here for a reason and you just, you know, you've just got to keep going. Whether it's hard or not, you will go through loads of, you know, failures, loads of blows, loads of heartbreaks, you will. But it's all about what you do with that. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, the lesson that you've learned and you take that lesson and you put it into what you want to do and then you get back up and just keep going. Yeah. Um, that's the no, 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 that's fantastic. I mean, that's a beautiful soundbite as well. 
So we uh, before we move on, it's like uh, we had a little discussion before the camera started rolling about the difference between being a director and a producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you kind of like, you know, did one of those Freudian slips. I want to be a producer. <laughs> and then once I started explaining it, so you said, no, 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 no. I want to be a director. <laughs> I mean, you know, from your learning, yeah. um, what do you think is the real best traveled? I mean, you have directed several films. Yeah. But you also kind of like was forced into producing some of them as well. Yeah. Like, I like both aspects of it. Mm. Um, but of course, like, you know, like on the producer, it's like visualization. Like... To me, like it's how you know you put the story together, and then obviously the director's got to do Interpret. that as a camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I sort of feel like I could do both. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to be a director. <laughs> I don't both know. direct and produce. <laughs> wow, she she doesn't she's not short I, of dreams. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I mean, like I'm at the learning phase right now, mm. so I feel like you know, when when, when like I finished and you know i really know what i want to do i feel like it's sort of working to get there yeah. um, seeing which one you know i mean you know real talk it's just yeah. the fact that that like um for myself you know obviously you know being a young person when i was in school i wanted to you know direct because that's who i thought directed by steven spielberg that's me <laughs> i'm out there man you know and yeah. i mean when i actually got into the realm of directing like when i was working in music videos and everything like that and I realized, uh, hmm, I, I, I think I need some more learning or <laughs> how come this doesn't come out the way I thought it should? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and everything like that. And I was ignoring my other strengths, yeah. my writing strengths or my idea strengths yeah. and uh, um, how um, my communication skills strengths. Yeah. I was ignoring those things because I had my narrow vision on I want to be the guy at the top of the ladder, yeah. <laughs> not realizing that that's not even the most powerful person there. <laughs> um, so it took me time to learn all of those things. So that's all I was just trying to say oh, is, yeah, is yeah. that, you know, as a woman of vision, you know, it's something to consider that the root producing is not a bad job. Yeah. And it's not a bad role, you know, for somebody who is as creative as you because you are a person with ideas. Yeah. And everything like that, you know what I mean? So that's all I had to say on that. Oh, so yeah. let's talk about <clears throat> your other ambitions, which is you also love modeling. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and you had just appeared in the big condo fashion show. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You looked really well <laughs> and everything you. like that um no but i mean like it's something that is a love of yours Come, tell me yeah. about that well um i always get asked like a question and mm -hmm. the question is like why do you model like that's i know like every time i work with a photographer that's the question that they ask mm -hmm. and i always say like and they say it's like a common answer from all of the models and it's like because it gives you like confidence like to be able to you know, do what you want to do. Yeah. And like, also, it's also like building character. I think um, it all. It always like when when oh, I go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like a different person when I'm doing it, and I always say like I've got an alter ego because yeah. my middle name is Jade. I'm like, oh, it's just Jade. Yeah, just <laughs> Jade. Jade just it, yeah. Jade walk, taking that walk on the wild side. Yeah, <laughs> but I love it because I'm trying to teach people to love themselves because I feel like if you love yourself, then you know, you sort of knowing what love is and then you know you know you're worth something so say like if you find love mm. um you'll see then you know the worth um if that person's not loving you right you'll know and you're just like you know what i'm worth better mm. um and then you know as well as when you love yourself you feel more empowered and it's like you know no one can like knock you down mm. um, they could try rock Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see like i had this comment on my instagram and i, I had like a dance video like joe like modeling and the girl turned around and said i think she's trying too hard i don't like it so like hmm. with, with me like i don't care like comments like that don't bother me because i'm at the stage now where i'm happy with who i am and you know i'm happy with myself and you know, when you love yourself, you, yeah. you like that. You can always so. say, I'm glad you have all this time on your hands to be worried about <laughs> me and what I'm doing. You know? <laughs> I say, like, if you've got nothing to, good to say, then don't say it. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, but, I mean, we, we all know about the troll effect of Instagram oh, or yeah. Insta. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, yeah, it is It is best to just kind of, like, when, when, because 
engagement never works. Yeah. Especially with the invisible keyboard warriors. You know, oh, yeah. it's like all they want is your attention. <laughs> and you just gave it to them. Thanks. You know? And I don't know. It, it, I killed her off a of kindness. I just turned yeah. around and I just said, uh, the important thing is having fun. And then I said, but thanks for your lovely comment. Because oh, nice. that, that's all it's about, really. Like, when I go out on the runway, I'm having fun. And yeah. I don't care what people think because I'm like, this is what I love to do. So yeah. you can't. Not me nothing. <laughs> See, now that's an amazing spirit to have there, Katie Jade. I mean, it's like uh, it's really wonderful and good. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> because this is International Women's Week that we're looking at, um, you know, we are in uh, the new times. Oh yeah. Yeah, even though you're Definitely. young, <laughs> even though you're young, we're in the new times and everything. And I remember I was on the show and um, <clears throat> and explained to the other uh, panelists what the woke culture was and being woke. <laughs> and I said, you know, sometimes you can be so woke that you're broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, what do you think about um, this rise of movement in the female agenda as far as like getting, getting more, doing more, being more? Um. I think like sometimes like being a woman is like really hard. Mm. Um, mostly like what I say extends from like you know doing makeup and hair and all that stuff. But as well, it's sort of you know the way you dress and all that stuff. Like you're perceived as you know something different. Say like if you've got like a tight dress on and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like with women, they shouldn't have to worry about what people think about them what they feel i feel yeah. like they should just go out there and be who they are yeah um for the simple reason like you know once you do that you, you don't care do you know what i mean like it's sort of like you're on a different level mm. um and it's sort of like changing the way you think and all that because most of it's like the way you're brought up isn't it um, no well it is but see but also the way you're brought up is uh you're brought up from people who are from another time period yeah yeah you know so and that's why it's like when people keep talking about change and like oh that's not how it should be because it was always yeah. this way <laughs> and it's like yeah but that way is back there yeah <laughs> right so it's always like one-sided yeah yeah <laughs> No, man, you got to be open to change, right? Yeah. Which is what I said in the beginning, that it's about being a provocator of change, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like being a mover and shaker and making a difference mm -hmm. and everything. So, I mean, like, so do you think that we're moving in this right direction where it's like uh, it's only a matter of time or it's not enough? Um, I feel like it's a bit of both, really. Like, sometimes it's not enough because there are some people out there who don't listen and they're still set in their ways. Mm -hmm. But, like... Stick in the mud. Are... <laughs> and there are, like, some people who, you know, want to make that change and they're out there making it and, mm -hmm. you know, aren't afraid of change, whereas though some people, you know, are afraid of yeah. changing. And because, you know... It, it took me a while as well to like get to this mindset like because when i was younger i was set in my ways i was like oh no like i don't want to do that don't want to do this what kind of ways um, was that sort of like generally stubborn like but... <laughs> yeah you were a brat i don't know just say i it. never ever thought that i would get to where i am now do you know what i mean like i always mm. just thought i'd be the shy person because like years ago i um, i used to look up to me twin because she was like dead confident like she right. was able to just do whatever she wanted to do and i'd be like i wish i was like that like yeah. i wish twins I could. tend to do that yeah. i mean is she fraternal or paternal um, fraternal fraternal <laughs> all right that means does she look like you or does she not look like you doesn't look like me <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right so 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 even though you're twins you know you're kind of like mm, yeah, something about you that's different yeah <laughs> like i always feel like i'm an old soul and she's sort of right. not yeah, um, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I was just, you know, put here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like, so do you feel that you guys are always kind of like running in this race, and you're kind of lagging behind? Yeah, like we were always like different. Mm -hmm. Um, but like she had her own children, and I just thought I don't want kids right now because I want to live my dream, like sort of mm. reach my goals that yeah. I want to do, and I always just thought that was good. But like when I was younger. I used to think I wanted to be like me twin because yeah. the way she was, um, I was so shy. I wouldn't talk to no one. I wouldn't like get a bus or nothing on my own. Wow. Um, and then I had to teach myself. Like I just completely just changed. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to be like that no more. And I just got up and went to pursue my goals. Wow. See, man, I wish I would have known about this whole twin twin effect thing. <laughs> I would have had more questions because it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> either way you look at it is, is that, um, 
you know, let's talk about um, what you already kind of said about um, what people should do or, 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 or like what you would, what, what advice you would give. Yeah. Right. Um, so obviously kind of like in uh, bringing it all down, mm -hmm. you know, um, you're a person who is pursuing your dreams, proudly pursuing your goals. You're making stuff. Mm -hmm. So, again, it doesn't matter what it looks like. What should matter is that you've made it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and everything, and you're continuing to make it, but it's about finding that that one project that takes you over that hill, mm -hmm. right? So, let's pretend, right, if we were in the future, <laughs> yeah, and you're making that one project yeah. that's going to be the one, right? So, in you, what would that project be? Well, I... Um so as though like we're on like mental health type of thing, um, I like wanted to do something that sort of you know along the lines of how I've been brought up, um, and what I've gone through to get where I am. Mm. So like I would want to do like something like that. Um, it's like by yeah, I can't say it biography. What's it called? You want to do the biography of Kaylee or... Jade <laughs> and her twin? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I think like. What we've been through is literally like um, something that will to achieve or to yeah, you've overcome, yeah. yeah. Um, because there's a lot of obstacles we've gone through, and mm. I feel like if we sort of if I portrayed that into you know camera um, and into like a film, I feel like it would get millions of people's like attention because mm. they'd be like, Do you know, it's sort of like. Uh, Oh my god! <laughs> In relation to uh, well, this yeah. is how, this is how a producer thinks. <laughs> <clears throat> I almost forgot the words. <laughs> no, no, no. This is how a producer thinks. Yeah. I think yeah. you're on the right track there, because um, what comes to my mind is two twins, two different people. <laughs> one has kids and one doesn't. One has a family and one doesn't. <laughs> one has a dream and one doesn't. Which one's better? Dun, dun, dun. Now yeah. that's a movie. Competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not competition. It's yeah. actually the fact okay. that, that like, um, there's this whole thing that you're supposed to be the same. Yeah. You know, it's like your parents dress you the same. It's like, you know, you're just, even if you're not, you know, yeah. um, certain, you're supposed to be the same. So what makes you different? It's like what inspires one twin to be different from the other? One's shy and one's confident. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like somebody got a bite of the cherry and the other didn't. You know, but what I'm trying to say is that you're describing a kind of scenario where for people who watch television that's all we see we only see the twins that look alike and you know even they could be evil twins you know like <laughs> the evil sisters you know or you know you know but there's always the sameness yeah but you just described this diversity between you two yeah. that it's curious you know i can't help it i can't help it my let me turn my <laughs> producer head off <laughs> yeah, it's my story my story <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Stop laughing. Live audience, people. <laughs> Nobody's telling me what time we're at. <laughs> but, you know, uh, um, but, Gainey, I just want to say I want to thank you for being one of our first guests um, in here, uh, Condor Online, for the International Women's Week. It's been a very interesting conversation. Yeah. And it doesn't matter when you stumble, as long as you don't fall. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You get it? So, I mean, like... Um, Obviously, you're just sharing yourself yeah. um, with the audience, and you're also giving us some positive feedback and uh, um, for what people can do, you yeah. know, because I'm pretty sure there's a young girl out there that is following that dream. She could be chasing it, or mm -hmm. she could just be walking really slowly. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point is she might find something interesting about your story, so I would yeah. like to thank you for sharing it with us oh, here. You know, so uh, once again, this is Kaylee Jade. She's a model, she's a filmmaker, and she is on the rise. She's climbing that mountain, and she's got that dream, as we all do. And so, as a provocative change, I'm pretty sure change is within her grasp. So, I'm Chase Johnson Lynch. You've been watching the topic series here at Condor Online International Women's Week Provocators of Change in our new studio here at uh, our Vauxhall base. So thank you for watching and tune in for the next one.